The Real McCoys, starring Walter Brennan, created by Irving Pincus. Want you to meet the family known as the Real McCoys. That's Grandpappy Amos, the head of the clan. He roars like a lion, but he's gentle as a lamb. And now here's Luke, who beams with joy since he may take Mrs. Luke McCoy. From West Virginia they came to stay in sunny California. Oh, Grandpappy Amos and the girls and the boys of the family known as the Reed McCoys. Maybe an apple box to set on. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed the show. Yeah, I thought it was real keen. It was even better than last week's. I'm sorry to have to turn off the picture, but I'm getting ready to close. <laughs> oh, we want to thank you. Uh, we'll probably be seeing you next Thursday night. <laughs> you folks sure like television. You ever thought of buying a set? Oh, yeah. yeah there's only, uh, only one thing stopping us. What's that? Do you live in a fringe area? No, a poor area. <laughs> I'm afraid we just don't have the money. Oh, now, television sets aren't that expensive. Any family with an average income can afford one. Yeah, well, if our income ever gets average, we'll stop by and see you. <laughs> oh, gee. Now, little Luke, we'll get a television set sometime, as soon as we can afford it. Well, what about the $15 from the Billboard Company for letting them put up their sign? Oh, little Luke, don't be silly. We couldn't buy a set for that. Oh, yes, you could. This one right over here. I've got it in the window for display, showing one of the first TV sets. <laughs> we'll only go back to the storeroom. You can have it for $15. You mean we could have that one? That's right. Oh, boy! I think we ought to buy it. Me, too. And now, wait a minute, everybody. The set works well. I'll guarantee that. It's not that. It's just, well, where this much money is concerned, everybody in the family has to have a say-so. And... But there's one member we haven't even talked to yet, Luke. Well, you leave Grandpa to me. I'll just tell him how much we all want it. But Luke... Now, just let me handle it. Mister, we'll be back tomorrow night after supper with the money for you. That's fine. I'll expect you. Good. Good night. Bye. Night. Thanks. Bye. Golly, we got a television set. We'll see all the big shows. <laughs> yeah, when I come home with a bad report card, I'll have a good excuse like all the other kids. <laughs> Grandpa's chair around so he can see real good, huh? Oh. <laughs> Grandpa will be able to see it fine from here. Well, I'm going to sit right here. <laughs> oh, no, you're not. You ruin your eyes sitting that close. Yeah, you're liable to fog up the screen with your breathing. <laughs> <laughs> Must be Grandpa. Boy, ain't he going to be surprised? <laughs> Well, where is everybody? Oh, there you are. See, I got some great news. Hey, but wait, Not right now, little Luke. I got something important I want to say. Now, what is it we've all been wanting more than anything else in the world? A television set. Of course not. Uh, a parasol. <laughs> Sam Watkins got a humdinger. He's willing to sell it to us real cheap. The money we got from that billboard to pay for two. <laughs> well, what's the matter with everybody? Didn't you hear what I said? Yeah, well, to tell the truth, Grandpa, we was, uh, we was thinking of using that money for something special. Well, this is special. Now, you take that pile of firewood out by the barn. Why, with that saw, we'd zip through it just like, like nothing at all. Yeah, well, wait, wait a minute, Grandpa. We got something to no, say to you. No, monkey with my chair here? Yeah, well, Grandpa, <laughs> Grandpa, listen now. We, all of us, we have uh, <clears throat> been kind of talking things over, and we decided... We're getting a television. We're getting it tomorrow. <laughs> hit with that innocent child just said. Before I wash his mouth out the soap, I want one of you to tell me that it ain't so. No, oh, it's the truth, Grandpa. We already talked to the man and we made us a deal. Why, you can't do that. I done give Sam five dollars deposit on the saw. He's bringing it over tomorrow. Well, for gosh sake, Grandpa, you could have told us first. 
We all want to spend that money for a television. Well, I ain't going to allow it. Not when I get a chance to buy a, a power saw that's in A1 condition. Gee, Grandpa. Why, that's pure foolishness, squatting in front of a little black box all day, a staring bleary-eyed at people who ain't more than two inches high. Grandpa, how can you say that? Oh, in no time at all, they'll disappear like buggy whips in, in high-button shoes. Now, look, Grandpa, it's getting downright embarrassing being the only folks in this community that ain't got a TV set. Well, many's the time I thought of putting an antenna up on our roof just for appearance sake. We know a power saw's more practical, but, well, there's times when a person's got to do things just for pure pleasure. We ain't got no time for pleasure. We got to spend all that time of scratching the ground to get a living. Well, I was hoping it wouldn't come to this, but you got to remember, Grandpa, this ain't your money. It belongs to all of us. I can see we got to put this up to family vote. Now, wait a and minute. And you got to remember that that's binding on all us McCoys. I can tell by looking at all of you. I get as much chance in this vote as a worm has in a hen house. Two sides to everything, Grandpa. Well, I'm on the side that's right. Go ahead and take your vote. Well, we're just trying to do what's fair, Grandpa. All right. But first, I want you to all stop for ten seconds and think over this terrible thing you're doing. Time's up. <laughs> All right. All those that want to use the cookie jar money to buy a television, raise your hand. Yesterday, it's all over and done with now. Let's shake hands. <laughs> well, now, doggone it, Grandpa. You can't go on like this forever. Sooner or later, you got to talk to us. Even if it's only to ask for the sugar. <laughs> Should I fix the fence this morning, Senor Grandpa? <laughs> well, Grandpa, do you want Pepino to fix the fence this morning or not? Well, in that case, I think I'll take the day off. <laughs> I think I'll fix the fence. <laughs> all right, suit yourself, Grandpa. But all your life, you've been blowing off steam. If you keep this bottle up inside you, you're going to explode. Can I fix you some eggs, Grandpa? <laughs> Say, I was, um, I was listening to one of them college experts on the radio last night. Did you hear him, Pepino? Oh, sure I heard him. What did he say? <laughs> well, he was saying that the, uh, the small farmer can't compete with them big fellas no more. No, it just ain't economical. It's kind of a shame to see it happening. Yes, yes. I guess the small farmer must go. You pass the toast, will you, Pepino? Yeah. Well, the handwriting's on the wall. The way things are going, I guess we'll just have to sell the farm for whatever we can get. Oh, I don't think we could get much for this farm. It's in very bad shape. <laughs> you know, it might be kind of interesting moving into the city. We could all get jobs at the factory. <laughs> Why don't we 
we just give up and let Grandpa have his old power saw? No, sirree, Bob. We took a boat fair and square, and I'm abiding by it. I can be just as ornery as he is. Senor Grampy's a very stubborn man. Bad temper. Hard to get along with. But he sure makes good eggs. <laughs> I got her all oiled and tuned up. Yes, sir. Once you get going with a tool like this, the air will be so thick with sawdust, the birds will have to stop flying and start walking, huh, ever? <laughs> Sam, I... Now, you just give me the $15 you owe me, and the saw is yours. Sam, there's something I gotta tell you. Why, you'll have that pile of logs over there sawed up in no time at all. Maybe I ought to watch you cut a branch or two, just so as I get the hang of it. Sure, okay. <laughs> Right. You sure like to see it work. <laughs> but you're working for some time, you'll know more about it than I do. Oh, I what do you think of that? I'm pretty slow catching on to things. Maybe you better do a little more. <laughs> Look, I ain't gonna saw up that whole pile of wood for you. You just give me the money. Well, no, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, Sam, but I, I'm afraid the deal's off. You mean I gotta go all the way back to town uh, and find me another customer? Now, don't go flying off the handle. Are you gonna buy this saw, Amos, or ain't you? Look, Sam, I want that saw worse than I want a lifetime pass to the county fair, but I just can't. You're making an awful mistake, Amos. You ain't ever in all your life gonna get an opportunity like this again. I know opportunity knocks but once and hardly ever knocks around here. <laughs> so long, Amos. When you get to sweating and straining over that pile of logs over there, you're gonna be awful gosh almighty sorry you ever let that saw slip through your fingers. I know, it's just a torture me to think about it. Let go, Amos. I can't. My brain shot me let go. My fingers don't pay no mind. Sam, I got to have that saw. Amos, is it a deal or ain't it? You get out and unload that tool out of that truck there, and I'm going to have to unload the cookie jar. I know I'm nothing but a poor, weak, miserable sinner, but once I get that power saw, I'll have a lot more strength to repaint. <laughs> Grandpa, you didn't have to do all that hard work. I would have done it. Here, let me give you a hand. It must be heavy. <laughs> well, that's a mighty clean job of sawing. Maybe too clean for hand sawing. <laughs> Well, I ain't sure, but there's something we better look into. What happened to the money? Well, ask Grandpa. I think he's ready to talk now. Of course I took that money. Anybody can tell me where I've done wrong, go right ahead. Shows a heap more sense to put our money into something practical. Don't you worry, you're gonna get your television set someday. You know, little Luke, ain't everybody can learn how to handle a power saw. 
But I'm confident that a bright boy like you, why, I can show you no time. Why, I'll go through them logs, zip, zip, zip. <laughs> Could you even said wood come in mighty handy right now? Sure would like to hear someone say something. Even if they was only two inches high. <laughs> Well, where you been? It took you long enough. Now, nah, hot biscuits. <laughs> Where's the butter? I forgot. <laughs> biscuits without butter is like a potato without salt. <laughs> Sorry. I guess it don't make no difference, Pepin, anyways. I'm gonna have to get used to eating these cold meals out here in the barn with the rest of the animals. But, Senor Grandpa, you could be in the house having supper with everybody else. Sitting there with all them cues and eyes staring at me? Well, that's enough to spoil a man's appetite. I guess maybe you're too touchy. I guess I'll wait out here till they all gets to bed. It's a couple of hours yet. What does the writing say inside the case? Careful now. This ain't no ordinary timepiece. Well, I'll be careful. To my son, from his loving father, May the 5th, 1860. Well, you look pretty good for a man must be. That <laughs> date don't mean me, is it? It's my grandpa's wash. He don't give it to my pa, my pa don't give it to me. Chihuahua! It's almost 100 years old. Yes, I'm going to pass it on to Luke. Providing we're talking by that time. <laughs> yeah, but why don't you go in the house and apologize? I ain't got nothing to apologize for. But there was a vote and you lost. That don't make no difference. They was voting for foolishness. I suppose you know why they done it. Because they want a television. No. Because they're young and they don't know no better. Well, Senor Rampa, maybe you have forgotten how it is to be young. I ain't that old. <laughs> I remember every gold done thing that happened to me when I was their age. You? Yes, sir. I remember taking a girl to the Monroe County Fair. Spent an eye on the five dollars that day. <laughs> five dollars, huh? Yes, it's stuffing herself with cotton candy and sarsaparilla and winning them cupid dolls and all that foolishness. It sounds like you got a wonderful time. Tell me, was she pretty? <laughs> yes, she sure was. She had on a green calico dress and green ribbon in her hair, too. I remember that because it fell off when I kissed her out in the back of the palm reading tent. <laughs> She must have liked you very much. Yeah, another thing I'd done the first year I was married. I walked right into a store and bought my wife a solid gold rocket, just like that. It cost me ten dollars. Was it her birthday? No, it wasn't nothing. I've been trying to figure out to this day why I'd done something so foolish. Well, Senor Rampa, I don't think it's foolish to spend your money to make people happy. Well, what did I get to show for it? You got some very nice memories. Yeah, I can picture Luke and Kate, years from now, talking about their memories. And the beautiful, wonderful, exciting power saw that their grandpa bought for us. You know, it's a funny thing. I used to look forward to a long, quiet evening. Now, since we've been expecting to have a TV set, and well, well, things seem kind of dull. I know, Lou. I've got a whole basket full of darning in there. I just don't feel up to it. Yeah. Well, it wasn't for Grandpa. Right now, we'd be watching that show with them private eye fellas. You know, I can almost hear the music from that show right now. Well, I hear it, too. What's going on? Grandpa. 
I know what it meant to you to sell your power saw so we could have this. I never did know such a thing. Power saw's out in the barn where she belongs. You gotta beat your nose in your amber! No! It's like taking the god done contraption, tearing the innards out of it, and use it for incubator. Let me try, Grandpa. Hey, Grandpa, just where did you get the money to buy this? Never you mind, I got ways. Maybe I can still see a tale of two cities. What time is it, Grandpa? What happened to your watch? Maybe it's being repaired. <laughs> and maybe you sold it to buy the television set. No, I never sold it. I bought it, don't you? You mean you pawned that beautiful watch, Grandpa? Well, it don't make no difference. Anything can keep peace in the family. I'll get it back for you, Grandpa. Don't you worry about it now. No, I mean it. Homer Peabody heard about us having that power saw, and he called up and offered me a dollar an hour to cut up some logs for him. <laughs> oh, Luke, you go see Homer first thing in the morning. Yeah, I'm happy, Luke, because someday that watch is going to be yours. Oh, I don't no, like Grandpa. Tell you... Grandpa, make him chase the Channel 7. I will not. I want to watch Pink as Kid. Now, and I think you should watch what the grown ups want to watch for the first night. Yeah, that's right. There's one of them private eyes on. Oh, uh, we can watch one of those anytime. I tell you, cities won't be on again. Well, I want to watch Pink Grandpa. as Kid. Ain't it wonderful? Now, wonderful. That, sure. To have a TV set and be able to squabble over it like every other normal American family. <laughs>